<laughs> one of the main things I think people need to understand is that we're all human beings and you can't wait till you need something to call somebody, you know. I know sometimes people th assume things and like there's a saying they say like what do you get a person that has everything you know what you get them Victoria anything because nobody gets them anything because people they need think they don't need anything so I say that to say this like a birthday text a holiday text like you know going to see them just thinking about them people really have lost the the idea of how important that is because now you think because you like a post on victoria or you just put a comment like that's sufficient but it's not the same as if i call victoria to see how she's doing just hit her on her birthday to see, make sure she's okay just you know she's doing something just come through and i think that i try to i'm really good at following up and staying in touch with people just in general not just when i need something for business mm. and i think we've lost that and i think that's so important how do you remember <laughs> 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 no for real like how do you remember because you meet so many people well you know i i, I have a pretty good memory and like i said you know i just try to always like i said just like i said it doesn't have to be all the time but even if it's once a year, even if it's twice a year, how you doing? Happy holidays, happy birthday. Like like I said, these small things that people take for granted go a long way. Mm -hmm. The uh, Like maybe a week ago, I sent a text out uh, to some women in my life that I feel like are light and I'm just so grateful for. And I wanted to remind them that they are that girl and they have this incredible light that people see even if they may not be feeling it and i got such a great response from sending out that text because it was so random it was like on a sunday morning and i was just like you know what i'm, I'm gonna make some people feel good because it makes me feel good right to make people feel good and the response was resounding so i love that i think you're so spot on with checking in with people when you don't need something and I think there's one more, Victoria, that sounds simple and it's going to sound cliche, but it's work for me and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for that. But people don't do it, especially nowadays. I treat people the way I like to be treated. It sounds simple, but it's really effective if you're really moving like that all the time. Because I think that people have lost that and they need to know oh victoria is this vlad is that and they just can't be like that generally all the time and people can see the difference and you know we come from that latino hospitality that's such a nature to us but i feel like we're losing that now sometimes because we're worried about clout status and you only do that to certain people and it's just like no if you did that to the majority of people you ran into people always remember like you said damn victoria remember me treating me like this people never forget how you make them feel mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i love that i think it was Maya angelo that said that like people don't remember what you say but they remember how you made them feel so i love that so just to make this very clear for people if people want to get in and invest in some way and they have like 500 to a thousand dollars is there a place for them to go well there are different ways like there's like I remember the other day I had somebody on, on my podcast that had like the whole crowd raise thing. There's some companies in cannabis that are doing crowd raising where you can not mm -hmm. do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But aside from that, like um, for the most part, for small investments like that, it's going to be more like they have cannabis stocks and stuff like that. But. Uh, that was the kind of like the the two ways that I've seen right now for small investments like that, like uh, crowd fund crowd fundraising, and um also like you know different stocks they have. Or you can use that to go to a conference and learn something, shake some hands, meet some people, volunteer, right? <laughs> get into the groove and get into the mix of things. So there is a question that I wanted to ask you about the dispensary because I had a, a colleague in the space of yours, Christine De La Rosa. Oh, that's um, the homie. Shout she, out to her. Yes. The people. Yes. She's on the manufacturing side. Yes. And we had an interesting conversation about the difference between the manufacturing side as well as the dispensary side. So I would love your view because her view was 
she believes that on the manufacturing side, there's more opportunity there because you're actually the supplier now. So what are what are your thoughts on the difference between being on the manufacturing side versus the dispensary side? My thoughts is that they're both can be massively profitable. It's really about not going for which one you think is profitable. It's about which one are you and your team more skilled at? Because we know that there's so, uh, if I had to compare it to alcohol, it's two different ways. Do you want to be, um, you know, Seagram's is some huge alcohol distributor, which just takes a whole different set of skills. Or do you want to be Tao Group? They're both massively successful, but it's two totally different sets of skills. So I think it's the same thing in cannabis. It's just that right now it's in its infancy. And it's funny you mentioned that the way that New York set it up, because in New York being the financial capital of the world, they really like were worried. They, they you know they really went hard with the antitrust to make sure that it doesn't get monopolized. Because you know New York's a place if they don't that it get monopolized fast. So what did they do? If you're on the retail side, if you're on the retail delivery a consumption lounge side, you cannot be on the manufacturing, growing, and testing side. Mm. You have to be on one side or the other unless you're a, a medical full vertical, which was there was only like 10 of those, then you can do everything from soup to nuts. So what that does is it, it, it helps everybody be the best at what they are. They got that model from alcohol because like Grey Goose can't own a liquor store you know, Tito's can't own a liquor store, so it's it's that kind of model. So I didn't even know that. Okay. So they're both can be tremendously profitable. Mm -hmm. I think it's more about like you doing what you and your team are skilled at and what you love doing instead of like just going into it because this side is more profitable and I and I always discourage people from doing that because the truth is, you know, this is the most highly regulated industry in the world because it's not federally legal. You have to go through like ridiculous amounts of things to pull this off. So if you don't have a high why and purpose, then money is going to be very difficult to succeed because there's so much you have to go through. You have to have like, of course, money is one of them, but you have to have other things to this pushing you because if not, there's a lot of other industries you could do easier things. You have to, look at it like something bigger than you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm.